Hello everyone and welcome back to Bat, Bat really. really Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program SSTO or SSRT video. Yes. Yeah. Sorry for the wait. You know when summer and spring hits, my job in road construction, it ramps up to a thousand. So it's like ten hour days, ah, uh, overtime. Blah 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 blah. Anyway, enough about me. I know I know, blah, 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 blah. I know I said that I was working on the Duna colony, and I am, I am, but for a split second. Uh, I lost track. And I thought to myself, can I turn a regular air breathing SSTO into an SSRT? The answer, of course, is yes. But the big question is, what would it look like? Would it be vastly larger? Obviously, more fuel consumption. How much more fuel would be left over? Other than the fuel cost, would it either be a better alternative when it comes to ease of flight and the quickness it gets up there compared to an air breathing SSTO, which does take its time for obvious reasons? And even if it is isn't better than the air breathing SSTO in some cases. Is the difference between the two so minuscule that all it does is boil down to a little bit more fuel difference. Like one takes a little bit more fuel to get up there than the other. And I'll tell you, knowing SSRTs or single stage rocket rocket technologies, a terminology coined by McDonnell Douglas before they became Boeing, and a terminology that was used way before SSTO terminology was even a thing, can space plane class SSRTs have such a minuscule difference compared to air breathing ones that other than being a little bit bigger and needing a little bit more fuel, there really isn't much of a difference. Other than the fact that an SSRT can get up there quicker and is a lot easier. Whereas an SSTO usually has to build up speed. It needs the Sabre engine, or in, in this case, the uh, the Rapier. No other engine, just that one engine. I mean, you could use a combination of turbojets and rockets and stuff, obviously, but for the most part, a lot of mature KSP players use a combination of air breathing jets and or rocket engines or nerves in order to get in space. Primarily for a air breathing SSTO, you stay in the atmosphere for a long time building up more and more speed till finally you've maxed out on how fast you can go through the thin atmosphere before kicking over to rockets so it takes a while definitely takes a while and on top of that for an SSTO air breathing SSTO drag is your worst enemy mostly because of the fact that you burn up most of your fuel and gain most of your speed by flying through the uh, thicker atmosphere or atmosphere in general whether it's the thin atmosphere or the thicker atmosphere you build your way up to it whatever the case may be you're in the atmosphere creating drag in order to build up speed. So I'd say that the downside to an air breathing SSTO is the immense detail to drag that you have to be aware of and the fact that its flight path or launch can be long and tedious depending on what you're trying to get out of it. If you're trying to be the most super duper uber duper uber duper 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 most fuel efficient SSTO ever then you're going to be in the atmosphere for quite a while before finally getting into space. I don't know about you but I'll probably fall asleep before then but hey if you're willing to you know take 12 minutes real time just to get into orbit for a, a game then good for you if using one drop of fuel to get into orbit tickles, tickles your fancy, fancy then great you are amazing i mean i've done it all before so for me personally it's nothing great or new but ssrts single stage rocket rocket technologies that don't use air breathing engines is a completely different beast it looks at the air breathing engines or the air breathing SSTOs and literally hawks a loogie in their direction. <laughs> it is rebellious. It is renegade. It goes against every conventional idea of what a space SSTO plane should be. It looks in the face of fuel consumption together with horribly long flight times and spits on it. All while looking fucking cool as hell. An SSRT doesn't care what you think. It's gonna take a crap ton of fuel and set that bitch on fire. It's gonna go screaming through the thick atmosphere within only a minute or two before reaching the thin to almost non-existent reaches of our Kerbin atmosphere straight into vacuum without hardly even feeling it. An SSRT doesn't really care if it's aerodynamically sound. Sure, drag is always a good thing to worry about, but for an SSRT, eh, not so much. It looks at the air breathing SSTO and its absolute need for drag efficiency and scoffs at it. Why do you ask? It's 
simple. An SSRT cuts through most of the thin, thick atmosphere before leveling out to increase its speed. And by then, drag is basically non-existent, kind of like a rocket. So when it comes to flight, an SSRT is actually very easy to fly. Now an SSRT space plane, interestingly enough, I was asked this question. Does an SSRT space plane even need wings and does it help it in some way? Is it more efficient to just launch an SSRT without wings, like a regular rocket? The answer is actually twofold. One, I would say yes, although I really haven't tested this. This should be my next video, by the way. I should test the difference between space plane SSRTs and just regular launch pad SSRTs. But in my mind, what I believe, without doing any research whatsoever, <laughs> is that it's more of a trade-off. Wings allow you to slow down in the atmosphere a lot sooner, a lot better, and give you control so that you can land on a runway. You can also take off from a runway. The fact that you can use a runway gives the SSRT space plane more diversity in its missions. Like for, for instance, if you had cargo, you could just drive it up in a cargo bay. You could fuel it up on the runway and then fly it again. Boom, done. You can glide to your destination if you're a little bit off. Not to mention the fucking cool factor. I would also imagine that you would be able to use less thrust as long as you're going to about 45 degree angle your speed would allow the wings to create enough lift to where the thrust could be used more the delta v in the in the thrust could be used more for getting up to speed than lifting the craft whereas a rocket most of the journey going up not most well you know a good portion of the journey going up a good portion of the fuel being used by the rocket is simply to lift its own weight more than building up speed to whip around the planet. Whereas a SSRT space plane right off the bat kind of splits that TWR or splits the fuel being used by putting half of it into lifting up the craft, sure, but also half of it into gaining orbital speed. The reason why it can do this is because of the wings. The wings creating lift help lift up the craft instead of putting all of that responsibility onto the rocket itself like a normal rocket would. However, for a rocket, when it launches, all the responsibility of lifting everything is on the engine. So all the fuel being burned is solely to lift up the weight of the craft, not, I repeat, not to gain speed to go into orbit. The delta V used just to gain altitude is delta V lost to gain orbital speed. If you could somehow get your delta V on your spacecraft to be 100% delta V being used to get into orbit, you would save so much fuel. It'd be like the equivalent of launching from Kerbin and not having to worry about atmosphere. Like if the atmosphere from Kerbin was gone. I think there's a moon from Joel that does that. Tylo? I think, yeah, Tylo. Tylo's like, has the same gravity as Kerbin, but, you know, has no atmosphere because it's a moon, so you don't even have to worry about gaining altitude. Just go high enough to where you won't run into a mountain and then suddenly just burn sideways and you'd have a crap ton of Delta V left over. Which is another cool thing about SSRT, is that if you can build an SSRT that can get off of Kerbin, then other than Eve, or, you know, Jewel, obviously, because it's a gas planet, you could pretty much go anywhere land anywhere. The SSRT would have to hook up to a mothership, but the SSRT by itself would be able to ferry goods personnel to any moon or planet other than Eve and Joel, obviously, and then bring them back up, no problem. Eve obviously is, is not ideal because not only is its atmosphere like twice as thick, but its gravity is twice as much, so you would technically need three to four times the amount of thrust and fuel. It, it can get ridiculous. And of course, Joel's a gas planet, we already know this, but anyway, that would be my take on it. In a nutshell, an SSRT space plane might be more fuel efficient than a regular rocket, only because of the fact that you're burning the gas, well, gas, yeah. fill her up, ching ching. You're burning the fuel 50-50 halfway up there, which means that you're getting more delta V into orbital speed than you are wasting it on just trying to lift the craft up to gain altitude because of the wings. The wings are picking up 
up a lot of the weight of the craft for you in comparison to not having wings at all. That would be my take on it. But I should and I will go into further study about this with an SSR T space plane. Would it be more efficient with or without wings? And what I'm so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take like like this, like this SR like this SSRT space plane, same amount of fuel and everything, and I'm gonna try to take off all the wings and whatnot, position everything so it's you know stable, but then I'm gonna launch it like a rocket and see if I get more more bang for my buck. I'm probably will but it could be that i was right about my theory and that uh i'll find out that it's not as efficient who knows but anyway so as you can see i went ahead and took an existing air breathing ssto design and turned it into an ssrt design i wanted to see if i could keep it somewhat the same size volume wise now granted it turned out to be a little bit bigger but not by much also as i always tell you guys the cool factor is very very important when designing anything so if you have to take that extra step that extra unnecessary step to make the design look cooler go for it now i'm not talking about throwing a bunch of parts on there that only add to the weight and don't really help whatsoever what i am saying however is take the existing parts that do help with the design on a mechanical level and shape or reshape or make them look better as for instance the t800 fuel tank while i was able to get about 12 of them on there it was just too many too much and it looked too bulky however with eight of them on there four on either side it was a lot more slender better looking but i still needed that extra fuel that came with the other four t800 tanks so what i did was i took the smallest tank and simply stretched it out so the amount of fuel that was in a t800 tank would be in that stretched out tank that was comprised of about 20 of those smaller tanks in order to duplicate the amount of fuel that was in one t800 tank so once i had the skinny tanks figured out i put four of them on there but now the craft looks nicer looks better still has the same amount of fuel that I need, but it looks way, 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 way nicer. A lot cleaner. Better. Also, because of the mechanics, game mechanics of Kerbal Space Program, when it comes to SSTOs, or anything really, the rocket itself has a magical resistance to heat, or re-entry heat. In reality, yes, they're very strong because they literally contain a controlled explosion. But when it comes to re-entry, your average rocket is going to fall apart. So you're going to need some sort of shielding when re-entering. So to recreate that, I put wings underneath and on the side of the main engine of the SSRT. This would simulate a type of heat shield protecting the main engine from re-entry. Now, yes, because I did that, it kind of messed around with the center of lift and everything, but it wasn't all that bad. I was able to fix it pretty, pretty easily. Because I put most of the fuel tanks towards the center of the craft, that meant that the center of mass didn't move all that much. The cool thing about having the space shuttle engine or the variant of the space shuttle engine that the game offers is that its gimbal is very strong. So control wasn't really a problem, especially during takeoff when pinching, when pinching what? When pitching the nose up in order to take off at a 45 degree angle. Because of that, I was able to put the center of lift farther back than normally you would in the beginning of flight. This means that when the fuel drained, the center of mass would come closer to the center of lift, making it very, very stable by the time it was ready to re enter Kerbin's atmosphere. It's actually quite nose heavy during takeoff, but as I said before, the engine helps prop the nose up so that the entire craft can take off just fine, thanks to the gimbal that's inside the engine. All in all, I think this thing worked out pretty good. I'm kind of interested to see what it would be like trying to dock this thing, but I'm pretty sure it'd be all right. As for the little service bay that's on top. That was obviously so I could put all the batteries and power generator stuff on there as well as the re-entry probe core. It'd protect it from any re-entry heat as well as aerodynamics. But anyway, that's that's pretty much it. It's just a neat little thing that, you know, I was inspired to do. I'm actually curious now as to what else I could turn into an SSRT that used to be an SSTO, air-breathing SSTO that is, into a rocket-powered space plane. Single-staged rocket-powered space plane. So buckle up space fans and get ready for that beautiful space plane footage.
But anyway, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of the channel. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like. It'll really help out with YouTube since YouTube is picky. It tends not to like videos unless they have a lot of likes on them for some reason. And if you really, 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 really liked what you saw, consider subscribing. I upload often, mostly Kerbal Space Program, mostly SSTO stuff, SSRTs. SSRTs a lot too. I'm, I'm kind of fond of that. I love SSRTs. They're very simple and cool. So I do a lot of that. And and if you're interested, I also have a membership. It's the cheapest that YouTube was able or allowed me to pick. But for members, they have neat little emojis and stuff that you can have next to your name and you can put on the comment section. Pretty cool stuff. Check it out. But anywho, this has been a Kerbal Space Program video. Thank you so much for watching. Love you all. Stay safe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.